In this video, I'm going to show you how to add images to OBS. So I've had a lot of people ask me about how to add images and there's a lot of different things that you can do with images in OBS and it's really easy to add them and it does a lot. You can add a lot of polish to your stream just by adding images. Uh, you can do announcement slides, you can do lower thirds, you can do like a capstone image at the very end of your stream instead of just cutting off the video, you can you can cut to like a, a logo um, and show that for a little bit with some music to kind of end the stream. There's a bunch of things that you can do that aren't necessarily difficult. Um, matter of fact, adding images to OBS is very easy, however, um, it adds a lot in terms of just making your your stream look professional or polished uh, simply by adding something other than your video feed, like your camera feed. So I'm going to take you to OBS. I'm going to show you how to do it. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. And so depending on what you're trying to accomplish or, you know, what you like to do as far as managing your stream, um, there's a few different ways to add images, but I'm just going to show you the easiest ways and uh, then you can kind of take those and, and use them however you want. But we're going to jump over to OBS and uh, just see what we can do here. Um, so in OBS, like normal, we have our preview window over here. We have our program window over here and our scenes, our sources and uh, and all of that. So in order to add an image, you can add an image um, through just adding a new scene or you can add an image just through adding a source on a scene you already have. Um, for the first example here, if you have like um, uh, announcement slides, if you design your announcement slides that are going to go up on a screen, you know, during service or maybe after service, a lot of people do it during the offering time, um, you can add those directly into OBS. So rather than trying to cut to your presenter software or something, sometimes it's just easier to put those images into OBS. Same thing with like a sermon slide or something like that. Now, if you have pro presenter or something like that, that you have all your slides in, all your images in that's gonna show on the screens, you can actually just bring that in through an NDI source, which is really easy. We're gonna make a video to show you how to do that later. Um, but sometimes if you're just running OBS, you want it in OBS, uh, this is how you do the images. So I'm going to jump down here and I'm going to add a new scene and I'm just going to call it announcements. And if you followed any of our other videos, you're going to know that I usually make like source scenes. And then when I want to manipulate them for different things, I, uh, I add more scenes and use the source scene. What I mean by that is since this is going to be where I add the images as sources, I'm not going to do any kind of fancy things with the announcement scene. I'm going to do that with another scene later. I'll show you what I mean. Um, but to add an image, you go to the scene that you want to add it to and you click on the plus sign and you click image. Now you can name this uh, layer, whatever you want. I'm going to call it um, announcement number one and click OK. And then it's going to ask me to browse and you just go and you find the image file wherever in your computer it is. I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to click open. And now I have that as an image in OBS. And so if I am, if you're looking at my face in OBS and then I switch the scene, it's going to switch to the, to the image and we're done. Right? So, um, there's another thing that you can do in OBS that I want to show you. And I'm going to go back to the announcements. I'm going to remove just the image layer. If you have multiple slides that you want to run, um, like announcement slides, you can actually do an image slideshow too. And uh, I'm not going to rename that. I'm just going to click OK. And you have some some options here. So you can always play even when not visible. I like that because it allows me to see it in preview. And I don't have to have it actually live in order to see what's going on. So I always play when not visible. Um, I do automatic because I don't want to manually click it. You can switch this to manual if you want to actually use hotkeys, which might be something you want to do if someone is talking through the announcements. So you don't want it to go to the next announcement if they're still talking about one. But as a general rule, I leave it automatic. Transition, I, I leave to fade and I want it to loop. And um, I want this to be automatic as well. And down here at the end is where you finally add your files. So I'm just going to click plus, add files. You can add files or directory. I'm going to add all of these images here. 
um, that I got from churchmotiongraphics.com and you can see they all show up and now it's started and if you watch this it's going to uh, transition to the next slide here in a second automatically there's the next one and then if you wait a few more minutes uh, a few more seconds it's going to transition to the next one and that will keep looping through those four or five images for forever and what I mean by sourcing what I was talking about a while ago is now I have this image slideshow full screen in the announcements layer. So I can cut to that layer if I want. I mean that scene if I want. But let's say that I am showing the um, the auditorium screen, maybe a speaker or something that's talking through. And I, I don't want to remove them, but I want to overlay the announcements on top of them. What I can do is um, say this is my, my main camera here, um, which is the camera is the source. I'm just gonna add another source to this scene and I'm, I'm gonna choose scene, and I'm gonna go to the announcements because that's the source scene. And now I have this, but because um, I have added this as a new layer to this other scene, I can resize this, and I can put it like picture in picture here. And since it's on a loop, it will automatically play. And now if I transition into that, um, what you're gonna see is me talking and picture in picture up here is the slides. So you can do you can do some really um, interesting things with that. You can resize it however you want. You can move it around however you want. And when you move it around, then um, you've got this. Uh, let me scoot over and make it look good. You've got the picture in picture, um, which makes OBS, this is why I like OBS, is that you can really do anything that you want. And if you want those to go away, all you have to do is click the eyeball and uh, it'll go away. And then when you transition from there, it will no longer show. If you want to bring it back on, you click the eyeball, it comes back up. So that's that's why I was saying there's multiple ways to do this. You can do it as a source, just do a, a new scene and add the scene to the, uh, the source to the scene. Or you can go and you can add it and um, you can just add the image right here and just hide it and show it as you want. A uh, bunch of different ways you can do that. Another thing that you can do, which I'm gonna hide this, so what I was showing before, instead of if I wanted to add an image on top of this, rather than make another scene and let that be the source, I can add the image directly to this. So I'm just gonna go to sources, I'm gonna click plus, I'm gonna click image, and this one I'm going to do a lower third. Um, and I've got that image right here. And that's what it looks like. It's a 1920, uh, 1920 by 1080 image that is transparent except for the graphic. And I'm gonna bring that in. I'm gonna resize it so that it's the right size. And then I'm gonna hide it. So if I transitioned in here, um, you're gonna see me now looking at the camera. But if I wanted to um, show that lower third, I would click the eyeball, and then I would just bring that lower third in. And now you see my face, you you see who I am, you see the lower third, and then I can hide that lower third, fade it back out, and it looks like this. Um, how I did that, I'm gonna switch back over to OBS so you can see me here. Um, how I did that is um, I just added the image above. So the sources are always, these are layers. The camera is at the very bottom. The announcements are on top of the camera and then the lower third is on top of that. So as when I click this eyeball, whatever's on top is gonna show on top, right? Um, so uh, what I did is I just showed it and then faded it in so that it moved it over here and showed it. And then while it was over here and showing, I removed it and then faded it back in and uh, it, it showed it faded it to where it was removed and then faded it to where it was showing and then faded it to where it was removed. So you can keep doing that. The deal is, is that if you're using OBS in studio mode, which has the preview and program, <coughs> every time that you show it um, and you want it to show to the actual stream, you'll have to, you'll have to fade that in or transition over. And then when it's transitioned over, if you want to take it away, you're going to have to transition back in again. So, uh, you'll always be transitioning if you want to update the program screen. Does that make sense? So that's that's uh, a couple of different ways that you can add images, a couple of different things that you can do with them. And uh, one of the things that we do, like if we were to show the announcement thing, we have uh, 
uh, image. And once the uh, live stream is over, we transition to that image, which is just kind of a skyline of Seattle with our logo in the middle. We transition to that and some music plays and stuff at the end of the stream so that it, it's kind of like a capstone to the whole thing. And all it is is adding an image. So uh, that's how you add images to OBS. There are different um, creative things that you can do if you want to you know, get creative with it, but that's really as easy as it is to, to add images and make your live stream even better. You can add the lower thirds. Now here's um, one final thing that, that you should consider when you're, when you're making images to load into OBS. If you're making like a lower third in Photoshop, which is how I made that lower third, or you can use Canva or whatever, as long as it is a transparent, like background is not white or black, the background is transparent, you can overlay that and whatever is underneath as another source, like the video feed or whatever, if you put the transparent image on top, wherever it is transparent, the video from underneath is going to show through. And so uh, rather than trying to make the image the size that you want, what I do is I make all of my images 1920 by 1080 because I my my canvas in OBS is 1920 by 1080. And then that allows me when I'm making the image to make it the size that I want, because when I load it into OBS, it's going to be the full size of that. And everything that is not designed is transparent. That way my video will show through. So that's just a little, some people try to make, oh, a lower third, I'm going to make it graphic this many pixels by that many pixels. And then I'm going to try to resize it when I get it on there. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is make it 1920 by 1080, make it, design it the size that you want it to show up on screen. And then it will be, um, it will be the right size whenever you go to that image. Same with announcements. Just make your announcement slides 1920 by 1080. If you go to churchmotiongraphics.com, you can download them. They'll automatically fit whenever you switch uh, to them. Uh, you won't have any problems there. You can also design them on canva.com. And as long as they're 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720, if you're streaming in 720, um, you'll have, you'll have, no problems whatsoever with the sizing being right. So hopefully that was helpful if you've been trying to add images and can't quite figure it out. Um, next, uh, in the next video, we're going to show you how to do video. So stick around, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next video.